What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to talk about dynamic range. Uh, pretty dark. Give me one second here. Okay that's better. Um, actually not quite too many highlights. One more second. Turn this down. All right. So as I was saying, this time it's going to all be about the dynamic range on a Pentax camera. And I've got to add one more light here because the lighting is a little off. Fire that up. All right. There we go. That's better. Okay. <clears throat> so when I had my Pentax K200D, loved, loved the CCD camera images. Oh. Mwah, magnifique. Anyway, uh, when I had that camera, it had an option for extended dynamic range, which would boost the base ISO from 100 to 200, uh, I guess to give a bit more headroom to work with uh, between shadows and highlights and all that fun stuff. On the newer Pentax cameras, uh, it's just a dynamic range setting directly in the menu uh, with highlight control and shadow uh, adjustment. Uh, now, I went through a series of photos uh, from having everything off and then slowly increasing the shadows, low, medium, high settings for shadow correction, uh, and then auto, and then highlight correction off on auto. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly what those differences look like. And uh, let's just get right to it. Keep the video short and sweet and boom! So here we have the images from the Pentax K3. Uh, now these are JPEGs. I did compare the RAW. There was no point in showing you that because this function of the extended dynamic range, shadow correction, highlight correction does not apply to RAW images. At first it looks like it when you see it on screen, but that's only the JPEG engine on the computer that's actually showing the images that way. When you actually bring it into a raw editor, they are all identical no matter what settings were applied, which is pretty much to be expected. Um, so these are the JPEGs, and this is with both shadow and highlight correction off entirely. So this is with absolutely no correction. Still a pretty sharp image. Um, now, the, the reason I used this setup is uh, just over on the side here, the trampoline. Because of the shadowing, the mesh, the uh, grade difference between the blacks, the grays, and everything, it really illustrates how effective these uh, dynamic range settings actually do work. So let's move on. Uh, this is shadow level one. So if you look in the mesh area here, I'm going to go back to when I turned it off. And you'll notice it's not a very huge difference, um, just down here as well along the grass between the bird feeder thing and the grass. Let's go back to shadow correction one. It is a it's a tiny bit lighter, not by much. Now things change immediately when you go to level two, uh, when you have that set up. Now you you can see that this is turning more gray than black. Let's go back one very stark difference right along here. You can see clearly that it, it is really pulling out shadow detail uh, almost to the point where blacks do not exist anymore. It's all gray and this is at the highest level of correction you can possibly get. Now that is a massive difference. Um, so level one is pretty good. Uh, level three is, I think it, it's way overcompensated. It would have to be a really dark exposure for you to have to use this one. I mean, it's absolutely, that's way too light. That's not even representative of how it actually looked in real life. Um, now here is shadow correction in auto. So it actually did bring a good amount of uh, shadow lifting along this section here, 
but it also did keep the dark areas that should be dark and the black areas around there black. Now, if I go back to when I had it at level three, you'll notice it's not, it's way too gray. Um, yeah, it, it's, this is not very accurate whatsoever. Um, now let's move on to the highlights. So this is with both in auto. Now, what you need to pay attention to is this section right here of this house. Uh, just along the siding. You'll notice that with the highlight correction settings changing, you'll notice how this changes. So this is with highlight correction at auto, which is pretty good. Um, it's not that much different than, uh, well, this is with both in auto actually. So let's have just highlight correction in auto. And again, you'll notice immediately the shadow area, now that I have the shadow correction turned off, this is very dark. Um, now let's go to highlight correction on. Now you'll notice this section here has been brought down. Let's go back one. One more. It's very, the, the highlight correction, it's very subtle. I was actually surprised, but it is subtle compared to the amount of correction the shadow uh, correction actually does. Now, with that said, that kind of illustrates the point that when you're actually working on raw files, you know, you're always told it's easier to pull shadow detail than it is to suppress highlights. And this kind of goes to show that same thing because this is with highlight uh, compensation on or highlight adjustment on. Um, and all these areas here where it's, you know, it has very intense highlights and having it at auto doesn't make much of a difference. It's extremely subtle, almost to the point of you really don't see what it's actually doing. And now with highlight correction off, yes, you can see it is brighter. It, it, it is a lot brighter. And let's go back to where it was actually... You know what, let's go into a folder and go to highlight correction on. Okay, there you go. Now you can see with a back to back comparison, you can clearly see how much of a difference it actually makes. This is much brighter. This is much brighter. And now if I go back to highlight on, you'll notice this is not nearly as bright. So that's pretty much the dynamic range settings on the Pentax camera if you wanna get a little bit more dynamic range out of it. Honestly, auto actually does a remarkably good job of pulling just the right amount of shadow detail and suppressing just the right amount of highlight detail. So as I said, this is both in auto, auto. it's pretty good. And this is with just shadow on auto and highlight correction off. And you'll notice that's a lot brighter over here. Again, both auto, shadow off. So leaving both in auto, it is a bit more processing. But in a matter of speaking, especially if you shoot JPEG, it's less worry at the end of your shoot. Um, but this is a, just a quick demo on exactly how the dynamic range settings, extent, expanded dynamic range settings, I should say, on a Pentax camera. And if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. And you guys will see me on my next video. And totally, I keep forgetting how, I keep forgetting to do this. If you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so because it helps me out. Leave a like, leave a comment, any thoughts, questions, let me know in the comments below. And y'all gonna see me on my next video. I'm out.